سريت من حرام ليلا إلى حرام كما سرى البدر في الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله we thank Allah who guided us to this and we could not be guided were Allah not to have guided us. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa barik wa karam and I ask Allah to send his salah, his salams, his prayers, his blessings, his peace and ennoblement upon Sayyidina Muhammad bin Abdullah and mab'uth rahmatan lil alameen upon Muhammad the son of Abdullah the one who was sent as a mercy to all beings and all worlds. And I ask Allah that these salah and salams be upon his family, on his companions, on all of his forefathers and brothers of all prophets and messengers. I ask Allah that they be upon his angels, his righteous servants, and all who follow them in goodness until the day of judgment. And I ask Allah that these be upon us and we be included with them, with those who are mentioned, and among them. I ask Allah that by Allah's mercy, and Allah is the most merciful of the merciful. And we are honored and grateful to be in this month of Rabi al Awwal, the month in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallama emerged in body and soul into this realm. And his uncle Al Abbas, at the end of seven lines of poetry about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his existence in Jannah, in the loins of Adam, his descension to the earth, his boarding the ark, his being cast into the fire with Ibrahim, his being transmitted through noble forefathers and chaste grandmothers until eventually he emerged into this world, Al-Abbas said, وَأَنْتَ لَمَّا وَلِدْتَ أَشْرَقَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَضَاءَتْ بِنُورِكَ الْأُفُقُ وَنَحْنُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْضِيَاءِ وَفِي النُّورِ وَصُبْلَ الرَّشَادِ نَخْتَرِقُ Allah said, speaking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in what Al-Hakim and Al-Tabarani narrated and literally Abbas praised Prophet Muhammad and commemorated his birth in the presence of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama in poetry. He said, when you were born, the whole earth was illumined. The earth lit up when you were born, O Messenger of Allah, and the horizons shone with your light. Your light shined to the horizons, O Messenger of Allah. And then he said, and we are in that light. And Abbas said, we are in that light and in that radiance and we travel the pathways of guidance. And our shuyukh of this age, speaking to Al Abbas, radiallahu anhu, said that Al Abbas said this 14 centuries ago. 14 centuries ago, he said that we are traveling in your light, O Messenger of Allah. And by that, we are guided, and we can still say in this time in which we stand, in this evening and this masjid in which we find ourselves, that we are in that light, and we are in that guidance, and by virtue of his light, and by virtue of his guidance, we travel on the pathways of guidance. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. فَجَزَ اللَّهُ عَنَّا سَيِّدَنَا مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَا هُوَ أَهْلُ We ask Allah to reward on our behalf the Messenger of Allah صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ with that which is becoming of him. And he said صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ in what Sahih from him narrated by Imam Ahmad and many others Inni indullah la khatamun nabiyyina wa inna adama lamun jadilun fi tinati. 
He said, surely I was with Allah, the seal of all prophets. He said this himself. I was with Allah, the seal of all the prophets, while Adam was still cast down in earth. Meaning prior to the life of Adam, as he phrased in another hadith, while Adam was bain a ruhi wal jasad. Adam was still between a lifeless form, still between the spirit and the body being connected. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, he explained this and he said, سَأُخْبِرُكُمْ عَنْ ذَلِكْ I will tell you about this. Dawa to Abi Ibrahim. I am the prayer of my forefather Abraham. Wabishara to Isa. And I am, sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, the glad tidings of Isa. Wa ru'ya ummiya lati ra'at. And I am the vision of my mother, which she saw. And the narrator continues that the mother of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, saw when she gave birth to him a light from which the palaces of Syria were illumined. And he recited this verse, Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhira wa da'iyan ilallahi bi'idnihi wa sirajan munira. O Prophet, surely we sent you as a witness a bearer of glad tidings and warning, an inviter, a caller, a summoner, da'i illallah, an inviter to Allah by the permission of Allah and a radiant lamp. So we send prayers and peace upon this radiant lamp who through his light, we're able to say la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Through his light and through his guidance. And make no mistake about it. Any verse of Allah's book that has or will be recited in this evening. Any hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that will be transmitted. Any sound meaning from Allah's book and the sunnah of the messenger that is conveyed tonight. All of that is in the da'wah of the Messenger, Allah Masadi, wa sallam, wa barak alayhi wa la'ali. All of these are just echoes of the voice of the Messenger, Allah Masadi, wa sallam, wa barak alayhi wa la'ali. And through that, we are guided. Were it not for him, we would not be guided. Were it not for his light, none of us would believe. Many of a number of us who are with you on stage and who are present, this guidance occurred in our very life. Right, the fakir, your needy brother. I reached 15 years of age prior to knowing the name Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Many who surround us are in the darkness of disbelief, ignorance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ignorance of Nabi Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And his light is decreed that it will reach them. And it will reach them. And as he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yablughanna hadha al-amru ma balagh al-layl wa nahar Surely this affair of mine will reach everywhere the night and the day reach. So just as night and day reach were in night in Britannia in, in the in the British Isles right now his light is going to reach that his guidance is going to reach that. There are households all of the members of the households are unbelievers tonight that his light will reach them, his guidance will reach them, and all of them will be believers. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us to be used for that. Amen. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, and we ask Allah, we ask Allah that we be with him. And we ask Allah that our expression of joy and love for him not merely be lip service and that we are those who follow him, he said, Allah revealed to him, وَقُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنْ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah revealed to your beloved and mine, may Allah grant us sidq in this mahabba and al-ittiba, say, this is my way. 
I invite to Allah upon insight, upon inner sight. And then he said what? Me and those who follow me, may Allah make us from them. And glory to Allah, and I am not from the polytheists. So this invitation reached us through this way of, el beloved, of the beloved. Sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama. And in this year's virtues, we're culminating the Meccan phase of the life of Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wa La Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallama. And the scholars of Sirah narrate from the Sirah of this Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wa La Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallama that he spent 13 years in Mecca. The first three years in Mecca, as we saw, his, his invitation was in secret. And then in the fourth year, he manifested and openly proclaimed his invitation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, your beloved and mine, spent 10 years following the various tribes during the Hajj seasons and otherwise at their encampments, inviting them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offering them salvation and he would say who will shelter me who will support me who will protect me so that I can convey the message of my Lord who will take this offer in exchange for Jannah in exchange for paradise and during this invitation he would be followed by his very uncle Abu Lahab who would be denying him and belying him and insulting him. In last year's virtues, we covered the year of sorrow, the 10th year after the message of the Prophet or the mission in the 10th year in the mission of the Prophet in which Sayyidatuna Khadija bin Khuwaylid and his uncle Abu Talib passed. We studied what he Sallallahu alayhi wa sallama called his most difficult day and that was the day of Ta'if when he was stoned and driven out of the city of Ta'if and bloodied Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa wa sallam that occurred when? that occurred in the 10th year The scholars mention that in the 11th year, Ijtahada, the Prophet wasallam, after this year of great loss that he termed the year of sorrow, after the most difficult day of his career, Sallallahu Alaihi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, we don't see any wavering. We don't see any faltering. We don't see any weakness. We see in the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, absolute fortitude in his mission. So he strived in continuing to present himself to the tribes in the seasons. And they had, culminating with the Hajj, three markets that the Arabs would congregate at. First they would congregate at a market called Al-Uqad. Then they would co congregate at a market called Majanna. And then they would conclude at a market called Dhul Majaz. And from there they would go to Minna uh, at what's called, or on the night that's called, or the day that's called rather, Yom at Tarwiya, the day of water gathering or, or, and so on. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, the scholars of Sirah mention, how was his ijtihad? Again, for this light to reach us. His ijtihad for the one standing before you, speaking to you, for the message of the da'wah of Islam, the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu to reach me, to reach my household, to reach you, to reach your households, your forefathers. What was his striving? And again, this is after the lost of his closest loved one. This is after being stoned and assaulted and insulted and his most difficult day, 
he sallallahu alayhi wa sallama went to these encampments and these festivals or aswaq tribe after tribe asking this tribe and that tribe he would say for example ayyuhan nas qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu O humanity say la ilaha illallah and you will be successful he would go to a tribe and invite them and a number of the Sahaba that were youngsters during that time describe seeing a man go and make this invitation to a given tribe. And after that, they would see someone following him, calling him a liar or saying this one has apostated from our religion. This one is, is separating father and son. Don't let this one delude you. And they ask, who is that? That is Muhammad who proclaims that he is God's messenger and the one following him is Abu Lahab. They narrate that he might be going between the tribes and someone is throwing dirt on him or someone is spitting on him in the face or someone is insulting him. They mention he did this inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until Dhuhr time with dirt thrown on him, people spitting in his face, insulting him. And then when Dhuhr came, a little girl came out with water and washed off his face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. And they, they said, who is that? That is uh, Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, and that is his daughter Zainab, right? She was a little radiant girl, as the, narr as the narrator said. And what did he say to her? He said, oh, my daughter, he comforted her. Don't fear for your father, defeat or humiliation. And that resembles the comfort he gave to Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha. Once he returned from one of his missions, one of his khurujat, one of his expeditions in inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spreading, as he said, the, the scriptures, the messages of his Lord. He came and what was his custom when he would return from a khuruj is first he would go to the masjid and pray the sunnah of arrival. And then he would first greet his daughter Sayyidina Fatima Zahra. So he came and he greeted her and she kissed him and began crying. So he asked her, what makes you cry? And she said, don't I see you weary? and dusty, and disheveled, and your clothing is threadbare. So he said, oh my daughter, uh, don't fear for your father, for I am conveying a message from my Lord, and my Lord has promised that the affair of your father will reach everywhere that the night and the day have reached, and that Allah will not keep Allah will not leave a single home, whether the dwellings of urban people or the dwellings of nomadic people, except that this religion of your father enters it, elevating some and humiliating others. So he gave her the glad tidings that the message of his dawah would reach you and I, would reach all lands. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us to be on his path. وَقُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنْ اتَّبَعْنِي Say, this is my way. Your beloved and mine, Allah ordered him to say, this is my way. I summon to Allah upon insight, me and those who follow me. So if we are those who follow Allah's messenger, we must be of those who summon to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us, we saw we are happy to see the joy that these children experienced hearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembered, hearing the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, salawat and salam invoked upon the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We, want, we should want this joy to reach all of those who are around us. There are many on a weekend night 
They're singing and dancing about other things. There are many on a weekend night. Their households are unhappy. Their children are unsafe. The darkness of disbelief and the alienation that the human soul feels when it doesn't know its Lord, they feel the pain of that. You see them acting it out. Those you see taking drugs, there's a void in their soul that they're trying to fill and that void will only be filled by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And by the barakah of this messenger, this light has reached us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's scripture, his wahi has reached us. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has reached us. Imagine, believe me, believe me, because I was in that condition. Many of those with whom you're in school with, those with whom you're in school, those with whom you work, they don't know Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of them may not even know his name, and even if they know his name, they've not been introduced to him, which means what? The da'wah has not reached them. What does the da'wah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reach, that reaching them mean? What does that mean? What does bulugu da'wah mean? Bulugu da'wah means for the name, description, um, and signs of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to reach a person. Prior to that, they're not even accountable. Many that surround us, his da'wah hasn't reached them. It's an obligation upon us. It's a fard kifaya upon us. It's an obligation of love upon us that we convey his da'wah. How can we be stingy with it? How can we just celebrate and enjoy it and reap the benefits of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without sharing him. Some of the fuqaha naam, some of the fuqaha say it's a collective obligation. However, at a level, at a level the da'wah is a personal obligation. Every single one of us that's reached puberty and possesses his or her reason, at a level the da'wah of Islam is a personal obligation upon each of us. Meaning that each of us with every person who's a non-Muslim or any person who we see openly disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each of us has at a heart level a personal obligation to Allah towards that, that, that creature of his subhanahu wa ta'ala. At what level is that? At the level of the heart, we're obliged towards them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one of you that sees a munkar, that sees a wrong, and disbelief is a wrong. Ignorance of the Prophet ﷺ is a wrong. Any disobedience to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a wrong. If one of us sees that, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِي Then let him change it with his hand, and most of us aren't in that position. That's for an Islamic uh, magistrate. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَتِعْفَ بِلِسَانِهِ he said, if they're unable to change it with their hand, then they must change it with their tongue. That's for those who have sufficient learning to address and treat that given ailment. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَتِعْ فَالْبِقَلْبِهِ The Prophet ﷺ said, if we are not able to change it with our tongue, we must change it with our heart. Ibn Hajar al haytami from the Fuqaha, he said, due to that, invitation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding the good and forbidding the wrong is a personal obligation upon everyone who's accountable every single one of us who's present if we're surrounded by those who the message of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallama has not reached we have a personal obligation a heart obligation to have mercy and concern and compassion and a desire to change the condition of that person. After that, as the Prophet ﷺ said, there's no faith, right? There's no faith beyond that. We absolutely are obliged to have the concern, concern for the invitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who surround us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that. Someone might say, how am I gonna invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
the author of the poem that we recited, he says 90% of the da'wah, 90%. 90% of the da'wah is a du'a fi jawfil layl. At minimum, have a heart that is compassionate, a heart that is concerned, a heart that pleads with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on behalf of the guidance of the creation, on behalf of our neighbors, on behalf of our brothers and sisters, on behalf of hearts that have been tricked by the dunya and the shaitan from the ummah of Muhammad into disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or turning their backs on Allah and his messenger, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us rightly guided and guiding of others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us to follow this messenger who Allah ordered to say, this is my way, who continued to strive even after his most difficult days, even after the year of sorrow, even after being slandered and dirt thrown on him and spit in his face and assaulted and driven from his own home, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued to strive and continued to make that, off that offer, who will support me? Who will shelter me so that I can convey the message of my Lord in exchange for Jannah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant each of our hearts and each of our homes to be a place that shelters and supports his invitation. And eventually he encountered in the 11th year during the Hajj time at that place called Al-Aqaba, the first of the Ansar, and he made this offer to them. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Please excuse me.